This week, I had a lot of fun sharing how I make my samples on my Snapchat page. And I have to say, I got a ton of questions and comments all about it. So this week, we are talking all about samples. So let's jump in. Ready, set, let's go. Hey guys, it's Jackie back again this week. And this week, like I said, we are jumping into all about samples. Now, this is something that I love to do. I love making samples simply because I like the crafts. I like having fun. I like being able to do something that is putting me out there and into the hands of my customers and my potential customers and my friends and whoever else, right? It's just a fun thing to do and it's one of those things that I look forward to every single month. So whether you guys are brand new to Scentsy and you've never made samples before, or maybe you've been with Scentsy for a while, but you just haven't ever gotten into making samples, that's okay. I'm gonna try and break this down step by step. Now let me preface by saying that there is a lot of different methods to making samples. You can go from easy peasy all the way up to really complicated. It just really depends on how much time, how much energy you really want to put forth into samples. I'm going to break this down and I'm going to talk you through how I make my samples and then I'm going to actually answer some of those questions that I got from sharing my sample making on my Snapchat and my Instagram. So um, I will be answering some of those questions. So you guys, you might hear your name called out. Who knows? So let's jump in and let's see where we're going to start out at. All right. First and foremost, the number one question I have always gotten asked is how do I determine what I'm making samples of? Well, <laughs> I subscribe to the scent and warmer of the month kits that are available to us as consultants every single month. So, um, I usually do the warmer of the month kit, so I get everything plus the warmer, but there are some months where I actually leave off the warmer and I just do the scent. Either way, it's a huge value for us as consultants to be able to get that kit because not only is it a way for us to earn some PRV, but it's also a really great way to give us a good marketing kit basically every single month. Since he's even kind of done a lot of it for us, right? They give us 50 flyers of the actual scent in the month, scent and warmer of the month. So we have our flyers that explain everything about the warmer, everything about the scent, and then it also gives the previous ones that are still available. So we've got plenty of room down there to put our information, make it unique to us. Truly, guys, hello, marketing materials, boom. They also help us even more because they actually give us 72 rub and sniff stickers. Now, you can really use these any way you like, but one of the ways that I love to utilize mine is actually directly on my samples. And that's simply for the fact of, I don't have a printer here at home. So by utilizing these stickers just on the front of the bag that automatically tells them what the scent is and I don't have to write it, I don't have to get a label, I don't have to have labels made, anything like that. So literally ready to go. Now you can also put these on your envelopes that you're mailing out in. You can use them on any mail outs that you do. You can just randomly stick them places, who cares? But the whole point of the matter is you really truly have a really great marketing material right here in these stickers. Then of course, let's talk about the scent. Hello, the scent. Now, if you guys follow my YouTube channel and subscribe, which I hope you do, um, every single month I do an unboxing of the scent of the month along with the warmer. Now, of course, this is normally what I utilize for my samples every single month, simply because in my kit, I get bars of these, so I've got enough to be able to devote 
two to three bars just to make samples with and not have to really dig in or purchase anything else above and beyond. It's also really fun because I know at least my customers really love to be able to smell the new scents as they arrive. How fun is it to know that every single month you have a brand new scent to look forward to? I mean, that's super cool, right? There's not a lot of other companies out there who do a brand new product every single month. We just happen to be with a really great company who does. So why not showcase the fact that we do? Every month after I get my kit and it arrives and I do my lovely unboxing video, then I kind of jump into making one big batch of samples. I will normally take two to three bars of the scent of the month. I warm them down. I've got a little melting pot. It's actually a chocolate melting pot, but it's used specifically for wax. I melt my bars down. I use fun little sample molds. You can find these at any craft store. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them anywhere pretty much. Looking like the can do making sections of wherever you're shopping. And you can just find fun, different molds to use. I particularly like using the molds when I do my big monthly batch of samples because this is my opportunity to not only get a little bit of crafting time in, but to really make them pretty, right? Over the years, I've bought a lot of molds. So I have a little bit of a stash of different molds from plastic to silicone. And what I do is I just kind of look at the sample, think about the month, what is my theme, and I try and match my molds as best as I can to the scent that I'm making. So for this month's batch, it happened to be Vanilla Mint, and if you can kind of see this here, this almost kind of looks like a little candy mold, which it is a candy mold, but I just thought that it really gave a true ring to the scent because vanilla mint reminds me of like those little candies that you get in the winter time. So I thought this was absolutely perfect. Now, if you happen to watch that Snapchat that I did of literally step-by-step -step how I make my samples, you'll see that what I did is I just melted my wax. I then poured it into my mold and then all I did is put it in my freezer for about 10 minutes it set and then when it comes out you just pop them out and then you have your samples easy peasy right so if I take one good moment during the month I can get this whole batch done and I don't have to worry about making any more samples for the rest of the month that works out really well for me time wise because the majority of what I create, I'm mailing out, I'm passing out, I'm just getting it out, right? That's the whole point. But then I always end up with some extras. And as you can see here, this is what I was left over with this month. I want to say there was about 18 left over. I had a whole nother round of samples that was left over. So I usually put them all in one big bag. And then what I do is throughout the rest of the month, if I need a sample, if I get a new contact, from my website, from social media, what have you. I already have samples ready to go that I can now pop into a bag, get out the door. Anything extra that I have left over, I am usually throwing these into the orders that are going out the door this month or next month. It doesn't have to be the same month. Or I may just give random people different samples. It just doesn't matter. The whole point in making samples for our business specifically is the fact that people need to be able to smell our product. I have always said that our product sells itself simply because all you have to do is get it into their hands. Once they smell the scent, they're gonna see the quality of the wax, they're gonna be able to actually use this sample because if they have a warmer at home, they can take this home and pop it right in. This is yet another reason why I love just making true, pure samples. Now during the summer months, yes, this method can be a little tricky. So during the summer, obviously heat plus wax equals sometimes a mushy mess when you're mailing them out. So I do an alternative method during the summer and that is with my felt samples. I'm gonna go ahead and link that video up here so you guys can see that if you need to refer to it. We're still in the winter months. I don't have to worry about any wax melting, but 
when it gets into those summer months and it starts getting hot, that's when I flip over to my other method. And I truly just use that all throughout the summer. Obviously those felt wax samples, they can't really use in their warmer. But the whole point is still getting them a sample that they can actually sniff in person and really get a good idea if they're going to enjoy this scent or not. And then that way they're able to purchase it right away. All right, so there's our method of madness when it comes to actually making the samples. So the next question that I happened to get over this past weekend, this one was from Sarah from Texas, and she's asking how much it usually costs for me to mail out samples. I have to say, Sarah, this is actually a really good question because I get this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot from um, different consultants and things like that. Here's the deal. Okay. Again, you can make samples as complicated as you want. I try and keep my business as simple as possible. I'm always looking out for the bottom line and therefore I'm really trying to ensure that I'm sticking to my business budget when it comes to actually spending money in my business. Samples is truly one of the most important things we can do as consultants. I can't say it enough and that's simply because I want people to be able to experience the quality of the product, the scent, the whole purpose of why I do what I do. So by being able to get samples out into their hands, normally I really see a large return on my samples. So by putting some money into the actual process of making them and mailing them out is not a big concern for me because I'm getting sales based upon people receiving samples. That's not to say that I spend a whole ton of money on samples. Personally, this is my method. Again, freeform this to your business, whatever works best for you. I create postcards on Vistaprint, so you can find a link to that through our Scentsy workstation actually, or you can just go to vistaprint.com. I just make up some fun generic postcards. I've got my information on the back, and then I always leave a space that just says, this scent sample is, and then I just write in the name each month. That makes them very generic, right? And it makes it a lot easier for me because I can just buy these in bulk once I've created them, and I just switch it up from time to time. But for the most part, I don't have to really concern myself too much because it's just basically my information, a little message from me, and just a fun graphic. That's really all it is, right? I like it to be fun and unique and pretty when they open it. And so all I do is I get one of my postcards and by using my sample molds, now again, when I'm picking the mold for my samples for the month, I really think about mailing and handing out because I do have some molds that are a lot deeper, right? So they're pretty thick samples when they're made. So when I know I'm gonna be mailing a bunch of samples, I'm gonna look for the thinnest one I can find that's going to fit the theme that I'm working with. So I don't know if you can kind of see this, if this kind of helps you here, but this is a very thin sample mold, right? So they're very thin. That's really good when I'm putting them in these envelopes because all I have to do is write my little message, stick my sample to it. I can staple it or just put it in there. I actually order the envelopes through Vistaprint as well. And so I stock up on those, throw it in a regular envelope, write it out, put a first class stamp on it, and boom, it's out the door. Now, if you're not using molds and maybe you don't have molds, you haven't bought a warmer yet to be able to melt anything down, um, you just don't have that or you don't have the craftiness, you just don't feel like putting in the effort to that, that's okay, that's okay. So all you have to do is just take your wax, so whichever scent that you're using, you can take a butter knife, you can take a crinkle cutter, and just kind of slice these and just make sure to slice them thinly so then that way you're not really adding weight or too much thickness to your envelope and you will be perfectly fine mailing these out. Obviously, by just using the first class postage, 
I'm not spending a whole ton of money, right? Yes, I'm buying my stamps, but what I'm doing is I'm using my Scentsy commissions on my business budget, and I'm using that just to purchase my stamps. This is another reason why I just try and keep it simple. Why try and reinvent the wheel when I can simply get some really great samples out very easily with a postcard and an envelope and one stamp. This is the quickest and easiest way and the most cost efficient way to get them out the door. All right, so let's see here. Let's answer another question. So another question I got, this one was from Mike on my team and he wanted to know how I determined who I sent samples to. Great question. So what I did in the very beginning when I first started Cincy is I always love, I've always loved doing samples. And so what I did is I was just very consumed with trying to get as many samples out the door as I possibly could, right? I would ask people on Facebook, I'd post it on my Facebook, I'd post it on other social media, who wants a sample? And I created this whole huge sample mailing list and it looked amazing and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna mail out all these samples and all of these people are gonna order and I'm just gonna be rolling in it for this month. This month is going to rock for me. And what happened? I spent a ton of time getting enough of those samples ready to complete that entire huge gigantic mailing list I created. And then I really wasn't seeing a whole bunch of sales coming back. <laughs> Just because people said that they wanted a sample doesn't mean that they're always going to be purchasing especially when it's someone you really don't know very well or maybe just happened to cross your posts on social media. That's great. I do not mind sending out samples to someone who's never tried Scentsy. I love first time Scentsy users, right? But at the same time, you kind of have to scale that back and really kind of put that into perspective. If somebody's asking you for a sample time and time and time and time and time again, but yet they've never ordered, Sometimes you have to actually put a cap on things and that's simply because you are running a business, right? So what I've done over time to scale that huge gigantic list down, now I only mail out samples to the people who have ordered from me within the last three months. So those are the people who get on my first round of samples that I get out the door. Those are the people getting those samples because they've purchased with me. They now have a history with me. And so now I want to be able to continue to share the new scents as they're coming out. These are the people who are again, consistently ordering and they're finding as they're trying the new ones that come out, they're becoming more and more interested and invested into my product and into my business, which is amazing. So I'm able to retain that customer base by kind of establishing that nice little relationship that we've got going on. That doesn't mean that during the month when I get those random requests from someone who came across something on social media that they're asking for a sample, that I don't send those out. Remember my bag of extra samples? Those will go out the door weekly as they come in. Wednesday is usually my mail day, so that's normally the day that everything kind of gets dropped off at the post office. So if I get those random requests, I go ahead, I put it all together because I've already got everything made up from that one time that I spent making samples. So all I have to do is just basically address an envelope, put a stamp on it, put it in the bag, and then on Wednesday, it gets dropped off at the post office. That's kind of how I determine my sample club, if you will. If you have not as many people in that three month period, that doesn't mean that you can't work this into your business and what's working for your business. So maybe you want to look at it and say, you know what? I don't really have that many people within the last three months. I'm going to go ahead and do it for the people who have ordered the last six months. So if again, that's something that would work better for your business, by all means, extend it out if you need to. Maybe you do so much in sales that the last three months is already too big of a list. Knock it down to the last 60 days. 
Again, whatever works for you, tailor this to your business. We also don't have to limit samples just to wax. We can find some really great ways to be able to send out wax samples. We can find really great ways to send out washer with samples. For my holiday customers, I actually used the ornaments that I made up, and that was really fun during the holidays. You can make up samples of body cream, hand cream, you could even send out a whole little fun trinket bag, and I've done this before with certain customers, where I've actually sent them like a laundry sample kit. And it came with a sample of washer whiffs and then a piece of a dryer disc. So I just took a dryer disc and cut it with some scissors and cut it into little strips. And then that way they could toss that into their dryer and really try out our laundry product system. So that was a great way to be able to get those types of samples out too. Get creative and again, customize this to your customers. If you have those customers who continuously order wax, but you see they've never ordered anything through the laundry line, maybe try that. Change it up every once in a while. Have some fun. Those are kind of the basics for samples. Again, I'm a huge sample person. You need to be able to get people smelling the product. When they're smelling it, that's when it really comes to life for them. We can post, we can talk about it, we can anything in the world. We can mail out catalogs all day long but if they're not actually trying the product, they're not gonna fall in love as quickly. I wanna hear from you now. Do you actually use samples in your business? Comment below, let me know how you do. Do you just do wax samples? Do you do other samples? And have you found that it really makes a difference in your business? Don't forget to subscribe, guys, because every single week a brand new training video comes, along with the fun unboxing videos throughout the month. Who doesn't love unboxing Scentsy? Until next week, I will talk to you soon. Peace, love, happiness. Bye.